Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, October 6th, and then we'll see how things look for Monday, October 9th. We had a fairly significant update. The initial reaction to the employment situation report was negative because of the headline number. It came in almost double or maybe even more than double what they had expected, and that freaked out the market. Well, after we got open and gapped lower, we ended up establishing a base and then spent the rest of the day going back up. The market kind of used the justification, well, parts of the report were a little bit more friendly than what we thought. And so we went ahead and started to buy. Now, there could have been some short covering going on because you have a lot of folks who are pretty convinced we're going down from here. And they had to get in to buy those positions to get out. And that can also help push the market higher. But interestingly enough, we closed right or we went right up to the resistance at the August 2022 high. And we're right back at resistance right now. So I'll show you that as we go through the charts. So let's go back and talk about what happened. At the open, we had a gap lower open after the employment situation report came out. We fell down below S1 at 4234, but we didn't get down to the 200 day simple moving average. I don't know, is close enough good enough like it is in hand grenades and atomic bombs? You just have to be close for them to be effective. Then we rebounded back above S1. We rose above the daily pivot at 4250, a nice round number. We went above the unchanged level. We stalled there for just a little bit. We went up to R1 at 4275, another round number, and we went up to R2 at 4292. We kept going. We got above 4300, and then we hit resistance at the August 2022 high at 4325, another round number, before falling back. And we fell back from that level, but we closed above 4300. So we were up 0.18, excuse me, 1.18% on above average volume. We're still negative, though, with our technicals. It's going to take more than just this one day to shift everything back positive. Our momentum is negative. We still have some major overhead resistance. We're right at resistance currently. Can we break through that? But at least we're seeing some signs of improvement. And it's about inflation and interest rates. And that's what the market is reacting to right now, as well as what the Fed says and what they will do. Some comments that we can make, the report that came out about the employment situation, it was taken as negative, but then they latched onto this part about the average hourly earnings growth, and that was down in what didn't come in stronger than expected or even at expected. So at least the financial media likes to do that. They want to make everything black and white. They think that the market can be put in a box. And if you go A plus B equals C, that's what's going to happen all the time. Well, the market just doesn't work that way, but they're able to rationalize it out, at least after things happen. Mega caps did lead things higher, and that's why we saw the indexes going up. Micro caps are still near that 52-week low. They, they bounced a little bit, but not very much. We still have some things on our short-term oversold or extreme negative list, although it's getting shorter. We have the Williams percent R, the stochastics, and the standard deviations chart. We still are watching the TTM squeeze, the 50-period exponential moving average, the PMO studies, parts of that. The BPI, that's what I'm personally keeping an eye on, the bullish percent index for the S&P. The shake in money flow continues to show some improvement. And then the 10 period average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows, that's still giving us an extreme negative reading. We're still going through this scenario that the market or the economy is stronger than expected. So the Fed is going to have to keep rates higher for longer and possibly raise interest rates. And then we're keeping an eye on the Chinese economy as well as oil prices. The dollar was down and interest rates were down. And both of those going lower ended up giving support to stocks. We still have the 30 to the 5 and the 10 to the 5, which is switched back to normal. We don't know if it's going to stay this way. So that's why I'm keeping them on the list where the 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 month, they're showing some improvement, but they're still inverted. Sentiment is gone from being extreme negative below 25 up to just negative now. We ticked up to 29. Our trend is still negative. The ADX, it's rolling over a bit, both in the short and intermediate term.
but it's still above its moving average. So that still suggests that we see a strengthening trend. The red line is still on top, so we default to positive. Our bias with the update, I've switched to positive. I'm still keeping our momentum at mixed because we, we want to see some follow through with this and see more improvements. The economic reports that came out, this was the big one. The non-farm payrolls pretty much double than what they had expected. It came in at 336,000. They expected 158,000. Last time it came in at 227,000. The non-farm payrolls were up 263,000. Again, a lot more than the 150,000 that they had expected and up from 175, excuse me, 177,000 that we saw last time. This is what the market is being credited with latching onto. The average hourly earnings, it came in up 0.2%, but they had expected it to be up 0.3%. Last time it did come in at being up 0.2%. The unemployment rate was unchanged. They expected it to tick down to 3.7. It's remained at 3.8%. The average hourly work week, that didn't change. It came in at 34.4, which was as expected, and also what we saw last time. Consumer credit came in down minus 15.6 billion. They had expected it to go up 12 billion, and last time it was up 11 billion. So folks are not living off their credit cards, at least as much right now. Here are some charts, and these are a bit skewed because of the whole COVID plunge and everything. This just shows the change in payrolls. The unemployment rate, which is still where it was last month at 3.8%. Here is the unemployment rate where we're just ticking sideways right now. The average hourly earnings are ticking down, but they're still above the 4% level. And the change month over month, you can see where we really boosted it back up much more than what they had thought. And initially, yeah, it freaked out the markets. But after a while, that freak out tends to be the folks that react to things and use their emotions to make a decision. Well, then later on, the professionals came in and said, OK, we're happy with where things are at. Let's run this market higher. Here's consumer credit where it shows that it is going down, even though it's increasing still on a year over year basis. And the change dropped off from what we have been seeing quite a bit going back to 2021. We're still above that 4.02% level for the 10 year yield. We're at 4.78%. So we're still well above that. And this is causing some concern about company earnings, which ultimately comes through to stock prices. Here's the intraday chart where we gapped lower in reaction to the report. We came down below the daily pivot, down below S1, and we bottomed out here at about this 42.25 area. We didn't get down to the 200-day simple moving average. That's currently at about 4,200 or 4,208 to try to read it the right way. And then we were off to the races after that. We came back above S1, back above the daily pivot, back above the unchanged level, stalled out a little bit here, got above R1, R2. Then it looked like, okay, at 4,300, it looked like maybe we were hitting some resistance here, fell back a little bit and then broke through it, came right up to the August 2022 high. And then we settled down a bit from that level. But all in all, it was a pretty positive day. Growth did outperform value. We see the blue line above the red line. And this is what we've been watching now ever since about the 22nd of September or so. We've been seeing growth outperforming value. So is there a convergence coming together of these things that were under the surface? And now this is helping the market to go higher. We can't answer that right now. It's looking better, but our charts are still suggesting that things are negative. Looking at growth versus value on an end of day basis, we did see an advance here, but we're just coming back to the previous high. And looking at growth to value with another measurement, we're also coming back to these previous highs, but it is starting to show some improvement and has been, even though we've been going down as far as the indexes are concerned. The trend, even though we're rolling over a little bit with the ADX, the red line is coming down. We still default to the negative and we still suggest that this is a trend until we actually cross below the moving average. And we did see the green line coming up. In the short term, also rolling over, the red line's coming down, the green line's going up, but we're still in a negative trending environment. 
keeping an eye on the VIX, where the closer we get to the middle part of October, maybe we'll finally top out somehow with the VIX. We don't know if that's happened already or if there's still more downside to come. Looking at the VIX, we did decline with the line chart and the bar chart and closed pretty much at the low for the session. The volatility of the VIX did decrease. We're starting to drop below both moving averages. We were pretty much sideways with this other fear gauge that we look at. We really spiked up, and now we've been chopping a little bit as the market is trying to figure out what it wants to do. The VIX to VVIX ratio is continuing to go up, so that's still longer-term negative. The equity put call ratio, based on five periods, it's continuing to go up. It's going to take a few days for Friday's move to get really inside of the calculation, and we're going to have to see more follow-through. So, so far, this remains negative. The longer-term equity put call ratio is also continuing to advance. That's negative. Seeing some improvement with the advanced decline line, coming back up to the moving average based on price, turning up based on volume, but still below the moving average. We're not really seeing any internal strength yet. It's really the big mega caps that helped things in Friday's session. We saw an expansion of new lows after we gapped, lo gapped lower at the open. Saw a little bit of new highs being generated. So our five period is trying to turn back up, but it's still negative and our 10 period continues to decline. We're showing a little bit of an improvement here, but we're still negative with our advanced decline ratio. This is kind of big. It could be if we stay above this red line, which is a moving average, we're seeing some improvement with the accumulation distribution. This is the smart money. And it looks like at least in Friday's session, they were buying. Also seeing some improvement here with the chicken money flow. And we have been seeing that for a few days. If we can get up above the zero line and turn green, that would be even more positive. We're not really changing all that much, much with our risk on risk off ratio. We were up in Friday's session, but we had been declining in the longer term. Looking at the cumulative new highs, excuse me, cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE, it did show some improvement in Friday's session. We turned back up slightly with our regular NYSE advanced decline line. We're right back up to the lower side of this longer term trend now. That's where we stopped in Friday's session. Are we going to be able to get back above that? That would turn things back more positive. If we stall right here and then start to go back down, that's pretty much just going to be a resumption of the downtrend. And on the bottom, we see where volume picked up to above average. We are seeing that volume is getting a little more healthy now. It's staying above this midpoint. On a short-term basis with our short, short-term stochastics, we're no longer extreme negative and bouncing up no longer extreme in the intermediate term. We're turning up, but still extreme negative in the longer short-term stochastic chart. Getting a little bit above the midpoint with the force index, but we're still below zero. So that is negative. We're still below all of the plotted moving average in our short-term rainbow, as well as our intermediate term rainbow. The Swindland trading oscillator, ticking up, but still negative based on price and volume. The go-no-go -no -go system has switched to a lighter shade of purple now. So after being more convicted negative, it's gone back to neutral negative. The TTM squeeze starting to come back up. We're seeing it from change from the dark red over to the lighter red. That could be somewhat positive. And here's a longer term look to give you some perspective. Maybe we've bottomed out with this indicator. We'll have to see. If we work off some of that and then start to go back down, things could get even worse. Looking at the balance of power, and no, we didn't get down to the 200-day moving average. It kind of looks like we did on this chart, but maybe we got close enough. But the balance of power is showing some improvement, but we're still negative. Showing the highest high and lowest low values. We're coming back up. We're just underneath the midpoint. The blue line has been coming down. That's negative where we've been declining and now flattening out slightly with the red line. That could signal that some kind of a base is forming. The ultimate oscillator is crossing above 50 and advancing. That's turned positive. The money flow, after not giving us an extreme negative reading, is turning back up. It's still below 50, negative, but improving. The vortex, we're coming down with the red line and up with the green line, but we're still negative here. We're no longer extreme with the 20-period exponential moving average study. We're still barely extreme with the 50, and we're starting to turn back up slightly with the 200-day exponential moving average. 
This is kind of a big one where we're coming back down with the bullish percent index. We didn't see much of a bounce here. We're still dropping below 30, but if eventually we can see this turn back up and go above 30, that could be a pretty positive signal. We're getting back up to almost being positive with the S&P McClellan oscillator, but because of that, our summation index is still heading lower based on price, although we did turn back up slightly based on volume. Sometimes volume will lead this indicator. The top part of this chart and the bottom part of this chart are two completely different indicators, so they're calculated completely differently. We did see a decline in the NYSE summation index based on price and volume, so it wasn't as broad across the entire market. We still remain neutral with the elder impulse system for the S&P. It's still blue. And we're seeing a little bit of a tick up with the ease of movement indicator, even though we're below zero. The Arun is pretty much flattening out right now, but we're still negative. And as I've been saying, you could make a case that we're getting a rather extreme negative reading. The red line on top, that's the sellers. They are decreasing, but the buyers are also decreasing according to this indicator. And that's why we are not seeing any movement here. We saw a little bit of a tick up with the 200 day simple moving average of those stocks inside the S&P. Saw a little bit more of a bounce with those above their 50 period moving average. We are still declining on a momentum basis. The PMO is declining and it's also declining based on price and volume. We're no longer extreme with the PMOs that are rising. We're turning back up and just barely extreme with the buy signals. Well, with the PMOs that are above zero, now we're starting to get extreme negative. The NYSE bullish percent index really didn't change all that much. We're still below 50 and declining. That's negative. We turned back up with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. That's where the big, a lot of the mega caps reside. So that's why we saw some improvement here, but we're still negative. The slope is trying to turn back up, but hasn't crossed above its moving average. The MACD also turning up, but still below the moving average. So on a momentum basis, we're still negative across the board in the short, intermediate, and long term. We didn't quite get down to the 200-day simple moving average. We were kind of playing around with the exponential moving average. It was acting as support, then it was acting as resistance. Well, we were able to break up above that, but we're still below these other moving averages in this moving average tree. We showed some improvement here with the standard deviations chart. We're looking a little bit extreme now. We're in the minus one standard deviation, but we're still underneath the midpoint. The Jacob oscillator showing some improvement and going back above zero. That's positive. And here's another big positive. We have the parabolic SAR with a brand new dot underneath. This is, in my opinion, one of the more important indicators. It's not a perfect indicator. And sometimes you can have some pretty hefty drawdowns when it says that we're trending in one direction and we have a counter move in the opposite direction. So I like, it, like to use it with other indicators, but the fact that this is switching back over, that is positive. And we're coming right back up to this 100% retracement level for the S&P. This is currently providing overhead resistance. We're also seeing overhead resistance at the longer term 68, 61.8% retracement level. And we're right back up to this long-term trend line. So yeah, we're pretty much indecisive right now. This is what we're also keeping an eye on. The daily special K chart is getting ready and potentially, unless we see a solid up move in Monday, Tuesday, and possibly even Wednesday session next week, we're going to drop below the red line here. And we don't see signals on this chart very often. We're still below 100 with the micro caps, even though they were up over half a percent. And David Keller is still thinking that maybe we are seeing a head and shoulders top here. We broke down below these previous levels. We came almost down to the 200-day moving average, but now we're starting to go back up. And I haven't updated this chart in a few days. This is just his chart that he posted. We're turning a little bit more new, or a little bit more positive now with the hike in Ashy. We're looking a little more positive with the Kegi, where it's red, so that's negative, but we're pointing up. We're still negative with the Ranko, and we're still negative with the three-line break. We're turning back up slightly with the equal weight, where we saw a little bit more bounce out of the S&P 500 weighted index. And this is where we're seeing the strength from. It's the mega caps that are really outperforming the rest of the S&P. 
We did maintain support with the Dow at this S1 level and bounced back up, but we're still below the 200-day moving average. And we're still at neutral for the elder impulse system for the diamonds. And we actually closed above the pivot level. This is, again, where a lot of the strength come, came from, where we were able to bounce up with the NASDAQ 100 and close above this level. However, we still have the 50-period moving average and this previous high as overhead resistance, as well as some of these other pivot points. And we switch back to positive for the QQQs with the Elder's Impulse system. And I haven't shown this in a while, but we're looking a little bit better on a momentum, ba momentum basis, where the NASDAQ 100 is starting to cross above its moving average. We're still below zero, but we were getting to a pretty extreme reading based on where we've been before. So this could potentially be turning things more positive. We're still above the 61.8% retracement level for the NASDAQ 100. We're getting a little far away from that now, but we have a solid down day and we'll be right back down here. And with the NASDAQ, we're right at the pivot level and we it had a good day as well, but we still have some overhead resistance to deal with. And we're a little bit above the 50% retracement level for the NASDAQ. In small caps, they've got a lot of repairing to do. They did bounce up in Friday's session, but we're in danger of seeing a death cross here unless we see a monster move, which is not very likely. So it's looking like this will cross over negative. And with the Russell 2000 small caps, we're still wondering, is this a head and shoulders top? Here we have the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder. We broke below shorter term support. But for right now, this longer term support area is continuing to hold up. We're showing some improvement with the RSI after being extreme negative. And we're turning back up, but we're still negative with the MACD. We've switched, or we still remain neutral for the elder impulse system for the mid caps. And just to compare, the small caps really are underperforming the rest of the S&P 500. That's not necessarily positive. We want to see this really going up in conjunction with the S&P going higher. So this is a bit of a warning sign. And we haven't looked at these charts for a while. We're still seeing small cap growth outperforming small cap value. We haven't really gone anywhere. We've been chopping more or less sideways. But in a shorter term basis, we are showing some improvement. With the mid caps, we are still above this S1 level, but still below the 200-day moving average. The elder impulse system remains neutral, and we are coming back to this previous high set when we look at mid cap growth versus mid cap value. Can that really break out? Earlier in the year, this is where we were seeing some internal strength in the market. Not so much in the small caps, and it would come and go in the large caps, but the mid caps were holding up a little better. So we want to keep an eye on this one. With the Dow, we were back up. We turned up slightly with the transports, but they underperformed on Friday. And we ticked up just a little bit with the utilities. The financial sector continues to be below its 200-day moving average, even though it was up 0.85%. The longer we stay below this, the more likely it is that we might see a death cross. The FANG index came right back up to its 50-day moving average. That's acting as overhead resistance. And I usually don't show it in this video, but I just want to give you an idea of the different yield curves where we're bouncing back up, but we're still inverted with the 10 to the two year and the 10 to the three month, where we've gone above zero with the 30 to the five and the 10 to the five. And then looking at interest rates where they really spiked up, my goodness, they were up at 4.8, almost 4.9% in Friday's session, and then spent the rest of the day coming down and setting, at least settling near their low for the session. And then the interest rates going down really gave a lot of support to support the stocks going up. And here's our 10 to the 5 yield curve, which is still looking more normal, and our 30 to 5 is still back to normal. We're a little bit above this longer term trend line now on our arithmetic scale chart. And then the S&P to utilities ratio, it declined just a little bit, but this has been going up. And a lot of times when you see this ratio going up, the S&P is also going up. And the staples, which are just not doing very well right now, this ratio continues to fall, which often gives good support to the S&P 500. And then we're also keeping an eye on the U.S. 10-year year yield, subtracting the German 10-year yield. That's continuing to go up. The dollar, it was down in Friday's session, 
but it's continuing to be in a shorter term uptrend where the correlation between the two is still fairly strong. Looking at growth versus value, the Qs are still above their moving average compared to the S&P. Discretionary actually turned down just a little bit, but we are seeing large cap growth outperforming large cap value. The large caps are showing improvement, the mid caps and the small caps. So this is under the surface potential strength that could come into the market, but we've got to see follow through. This is longer term negative. The 50 period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows, we continue to be below zero. The indicator, even though it bounced up slightly, it's at minus 39. It's going to take a while for it to get back up above zero. And so that's dragging the red line, which is the 50-day moving average, down below zero. This is another extreme negative reading that we've been seeing for a few days now. This is the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows, and it's 10 days. So you can't just take one day in isolation. We're still getting an extreme negative reading, which sometimes will mark some kind of a bottom in the S&P. The dollar was down a little bit. We're back into the 105 range currently. And we're coming up to the end of this 50-day cycle. It will be on October 11th. So this upcoming week, we'll have to see. Is that going to change anything? Did we start early now? Or is this just an anomaly that happened? And then we're going to continue to go lower? That's what we're watching as we see prices play out. So what's our outlook for Monday? The Treasury market will be closed on Monday for Columbus Day, but the stock market is still going to be open. It's one of those pseudo holidays. We are starting to get some earnings reports and we're ending one earnings season and a new earnings season is starting. The UAW strike is still continuing. They're still battling it out back and forth to get a new Speaker of the House. Our technicals are still negative, but we're showing some improvement. We're still in a confirmed downtrend and still working off being oversold. Uh, we There won't be any reports on Monday. I forgot to update this slide, and I don't want to go back and re-record the entire video. And we're also keeping an eye on all the different geopolitical events that are out there. Here is the calendar that I did update for the upcoming week, where we're going to get PPI on Wednesday, which is kind of strange. It usually comes out after CPI, which will be coming out on Thursday. So we're going to get some pretty big inflation reports coming out in the upcoming week. And then we'll get consumer sentiment on Friday the 13th, a very lucky day. Here are the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for October 9th. We're neutral to negative with the Dow and S&P, or we're neutral to positive with the NASDAQ. And then wondering, are we going to see some kind of a bounce here if we follow along with this green line with a sitting president who's running for re-election? And we're also wondering if we're coming into that period where we see a bit of a bounce based on Carson's research. And also, it, it's kind of ambiguous right now. You can't really pick out a specific time right as we go through this. But are we seeing some kind of a bounce? Are we going to see some weakness going into the latter part of October? And also seeing pretty much that same thing with the green line with the S&P on this chart. And we're up 10 out of 18 times for the month of October. We're down 8 out of 18 times during pre-election years going back to 1950. We're not really seeing all that much action with Bitcoin, so we're not really seeing the seasonality that the green line would suggest. We're seeing more of the blue line and the black line here because we're pretty much chopping sideways after generating a recent death cross with the Bitcoin index. So our scenarios, we're still leaning towards the down one. We are seeing some improvement, but not enough to shift everything. We need to see follow through here. So we're not going with the up scenario, at least yet, and we're not going with the sideways trend, at least yet, because both of our ADX charts are above 20. So our warning signs, and I'll go through these in the weekly video that I do, we're still below those longer term trend lines. Seasonally and historically, October tends to be better than September, which is not a hard thing to do. The equity put call ratio based on five periods is going up and based on 253 periods is also going up. That's negative. Our oscillators showing some improvement, but still negative. The PPO for the NASDAQ 100 is improving and could be getting ready to cross over its moving average. The cumulative new highs and new lows for the NASDAQ are still showing weakness. We're still above the 2007 level with the three-month yield where we were at at that time 
waiting to see if that's going to roll over. The 50-day new highs, new lows exponential moving average study is negative. The Russell is below its 200-day simple moving average. We're also wondering if it's working off of a head and shoulders top. Another day or two being below that 200-day moving average, and we're going to see a death cross there. The Vortex is negative, and we're dealing with earnings season, which can be either positive or negative. The long-term seasonality and setups, again, which I'll go over in the weekly video, those are still in the background. The daily special K chart for right now is positive, but it could be getting ready to cross negative. The parabolic SAR has now turned back to being positive. The S&P is still above the downtrend channel upper line. The risk on posture overall has been showing weakness, but it did bounce over the last day or two. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is declining and the S&P 500 to utilities ratio is going up. Both of these together often give support to the S&P. The Russell, the small caps and the mid caps. Yeah, they have golden crosses, but they're all below their 200 day moving average now. So if that continues, which is kind of likely unless we see some really huge percentage moves in the next couple of days. It looks like we're going to have a death cross there. Small and mid-cap growth, where I did show the charts, they continue to be positive. The financial sector is also working off of a recent golden cross, but it's still below its 200-day moving average. The longer it stays under that, the more likely we might see a death cross. So our conclusion, we're negative, but showing some improvement at this point. We are in a confirmed downtrend. In the short term, we're in a downtrend. We're still dealing with being oversold, but showing some improvement. Intermediate term, a little bit oversold, but also improving. We're still positive in the longer term. So thank you. I hope you have a really good weekend. I will be preparing the weekly video and the intermarket analysis video and the deep dive video. So please look for those and I hope they give you some insight. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you in the next video.